Hey family, welcome to another episode of Healing Every Soul Podcast. I'm your host, Save With Sauce, and do me a favor, while you are here, go ahead and subscribe. Subscribe on YouTube if you're listening, subscribe on Apple Podcasts if you're listening, on Spotify, Amazon Music, wherever you are listening from, go ahead and subscribe to this podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. If this is your first time here, welcome 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 and i pray that you are able to take away some gems from this episode and from even the past episodes um one of the last episodes where i had apostle desmond wiggins on here we spoke about building and relationship with god and that was listen it was so many gems so many nuggets dropped in that episode and so if you haven't tuned into the last episode i encourage you to go ahead and tune into the last episode But for this month, I'm super excited about the theme for this month. I'm super excited about some of the things that the Lord had begun to lay on my heart. And um, this this episode in particular, well, actually, let me say the theme for the month. Uh, The theme for the month, so I know last month, the theme was about building and relationship with God and walking with God. The theme for this month is the cost to follow. And my topic for today's episode is it's around counting the cost and I'll get more and I'll go more in detail about what exactly that mean. But even as I was preparing for this episode, one of the things that the Lord had begun to deal with me about was just how every single thing that is valuable in this earth requires a process, every single thing. And like, like God had started to even like give me just different examples, not limited only to spiritual things, but even things in the natural when it comes down to um, when it comes down to our occupations, right? Where people, whatever occupation people desire to pursue after, whether it's being a doctor, lawyer, just all of these different things, like those occupations require a process they require for someone to undergo the necessary tools and the knowledge that's needed to master the field that they're in and not only that but to excel in the field that they're in to make sure that what they are doing they're they're doing it properly to make sure that the services that they're rendering it's done effectively and not just that but it's done the right way And so for every single thing, if somebody desires to obtain a degree, there's a process that you have to go through. You have to, you know, undergo the process, the, um, the classes that's necessary. You have to endure, right. The, the, the work that's not required to put in for you to obtain that degree. You have to endure the time where you doing them papers and whether it's tests and quizzes and all these different things, but there's a process that one has to undergo before they can get to the end goal for person. And even when you think about just, um, when you think about even like, you know, some of the people that you may aspire to you, that, that, that inspires you or the people that you may look up to, they have to undergo a process like nothing in this world just arrives. Nothing in this world is just like, bam, this just, it just got here and it was absent of a process. And it's the same concept with us. Like for every single one of us, there is a process that we must undergo. There's um, a developing period that we must undergo. And that can be just for us to, that that can be just us naturally and in this in the day to day of life, whether we believe it or not, the day to day we're we're all going through a process, right? And um, and our walk with God that in itself is a process. If you are a person who you know you're you're a believer and you're walking with God, that in itself is a process. And so one of the things that that um the Lord had laid on my heart was count the cost. And I'm like, God, what exactly does that mean? And I want to read to you guys this definition to the, the definition of, um, of cost, because we hear words, but sometimes when you read the definition, it hits a little bit different. 
And so the definition of cost is the effort, the loss, or the sacrifice necessary to achieve or obtain something. And I'm like, okay, God, what exactly does that mean? Count the cost. And what God had begun to, to share with me is just like, all right, for whatever it is that you want out of life, it's going to cost you something, right? When you are working towards a goal, when you're working towards just um, a goal or an endeavor, it requires something. It requires hard work. It requires your time. It requires dedication. It requires you being diligent in the thing that you are working towards. It requires something. It costs something. And notice how the definition says the effort, the loss, or the sacrifice necessary to achieve or obtain something. And, and, I love how it mentions three different things, but yet these three and these three different things, they're all so significant because think about it. When we want something, right, be it an endeavor, be it a relationship, because even relationships, it costs. It costs for you to put your time in. It costs for you to put in the necessary work for that, for, for that relationship to be for that marriage to be for that and, and it's not just limited to to marriage but even a relationship with maybe with a sibling with a with a child or with a friend like these different things it costs something whether it's your time whether it's for you to show up whether it's for you to be a listening ear whether it's for you to you know extend a helping hand whatever it is these different things it costs something right? It costs an effort for you to put in to make sure that this thing works. And so um, I love how the definition had mentioned these three, like it mentioned a, a number of different things, but one being the effort. And then one thing that I found that was so interesting was it said that cost is also a loss. And I immediately, I, I, I immediately went into thinking about business, right? I'm so sure that some of the greatest businesses that we see even today, it costs something. And sometimes you have to lose to win. Sometimes you have to lose. And that might sound crazy. Like, wait, what? How does that even make sense? But sometimes you have to lose some things in order to win. Like when businesses are first starting up, it costs you to spend money. It costs for you to invest. It costs, you know, it, these things cost in order to see the outcome be something great. And at the time, we don't necessarily count it as a loss because we know that even though you're losing money, it's so that you can make something like it's so that something can come out of it. And so for anything valuable, it costs something. And then the last thing was a sacrifice and how um, for, for, for things that cost, it requires a sacrifice. And sometimes that sacrifice is time because we feel like, all right, sometimes some of us feel like, we're working against time where there's not enough time. Sometimes that sacrifice is a cost, whether it's it's finances. Sometimes that that sacrifice is it costs you letting go of your like you have to it, it, that that sacrifice is letting go of your own way of handling things right? Sacrificing, letting go of your own way of handling things and doing things. God's way. And so for every single thing under this, this earth, it costs something. And I'm like, okay, God, you know, count the cost. All right. But what exactly does that mean? I get it for everything under this earth. It costs something. And, um, one of the things that God had laid on my heart is like, all right, but even the cost to follow, it costs something even for us to follow. And, like I, I was blown away by that concept because I remember growing up, I don't know where I heard this, this saying, I don't know if it was like my grandmother, I heard say this, or it was, it was like an old person, an older person in church. I don't know where I heard this saying from, but I remember someone said like, ain't nothing in this world free, but Jesus. And I, I like, I didn't understand that then. And even growing up, I remember like I said it a, a couple of times, like there's nothing in this world that's free, but Jesus. And that's really true. 
there's nothing in this world that's free but Jesus. But, well, to to an extent. Um, but God reminded me of that saying, and he's like, no, but it costs to follow. It takes effort to follow. It takes for you to lose the life that you knew prior coming to Christ, right? Not, not a, not a literal death, but more so dying to the different things that you may have to make the different things that you used to do, the different ways that you used to have dying to that, to, and, and again, remember when I told you that when you think about the cost and sometimes things look like a loss, but some that loss is losing to gain. And so losing your old life, your old ways, the old ways of doing things, the old ways of handling things, the old ways of responding to different things, right? So that's the loss that we take. It's, it's not necessarily that we take a loss as in like, you know, like a loss that's that's for a negative reason, but it is a loss that requires us to say like, hey, I'm dying to this. I'm giving up this. I'm not going to respond like this, but we gain because now it is the, the gain that we have is it's the abundant life. It is the life in Christ. It is the, you know, the, the, the life in him. Right. And so that's the gain. And so, and then the sacrifice part, and I'm going to walk through each and every part, but just like, I'm just shedding light on how this ties into the cost to follow. So the sacrifice following God requires sacrifice. It requires, and I've said this before in the past, but just like those times where we have to say no, it requires the times where we want to respond a certain kind of way, right? But we don't. We take the low road. It requires for us to literally allow God to work on our mind and our heart. It requires for us to make the sacrifice of our time spent with him. It requires sacrifice. And so for every single thing in the earth, including walking with God, it requires, it requires a cost. So following Christ requires sacrifice. It requires a cost, right? It requires an effort. It requires losing to win, losing to gain, losing the formal ways to gain, and it requires sacrifice. Um, there was a scripture the Lord laid on my heart, right? Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. And it says, then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Sometimes we could read a scripture or we could know a scripture and depending on what it is that God wants you to receive from it, like this, we can receive different things depending on, so, okay, let me backtrack. Sometimes God will lead us to a scripture, right? And the word of God is alive and it's active. And so what it may speak or what you may receive from it and that one instant that you read it in that moment may very much be different if you read it three years later or a year later, right? Because the word of God is active, it's, it's always speaking. And so you may not see a scripture the same way that you do. Sometimes your understanding has increased your wisdom the or, or even um, your relationship with God has shifted. And so when we read the word of God, sometimes how we once read a scripture or heard a scripture is different from the current place that we are in. And so I said that to say that when the Lord had, had laid this scripture on my heart and I started to just really ponder on it and, and meditate on it, I thought about, it brought me back to counting the cost and the cost to follow because the Bible says that one must deny themselves and take up the cross and follow after Christ. And for one, to deny yourself is the ability to refrain from something that you find satisfying. 
It is the ability to not do something that you find satisfying. It is the ability to turn away from something that very much appeases you, right? And so this is what the scripture is saying. It's saying that if if you desire to be, um, Jesus is talking and he's like, if you desire, if anyone desires to be my disciple, one who follows after me, that you must deny yourself and take up your cross and follow. And um, even as far as like taking up the cross, right? Because sometimes we really don't know what that, that cross would entail. It looks different from everybody. But one of the significant things about a cross is, is something that marks, when you think about a cross, right? Like a cross is something that if you see a person wearing a cross, like people automatically, um, like it's, it's like the cross is a representation of, or it's a symbol of who you say that you represent. And so to say that I'm picking up my cross, it's like, God, I'm making the decision to um, follow after you and in me following this something, there's a mark that's going to be on me that suggests that I am a follower of Christ. And, um, and so that should be demonstrated in the way that like the, the cross that I carry should be demonstrated in the way that I walk in the way that I live in the way that I speak in the way that I interact with people. And the thing is to be, to, to, and, and another thing before I say what I was about to say, another thing is, it says to follow. When you think about someone following you are literally copy your 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 you're copying what you see you are imitating what you see and so jesus is requiring for us to follow after him for us to pattern our lives after after him and i know one might be listening and say like yeah that's easier said than done yeah that's but that's why this that, that's exactly why i've pointed out in the beginning of this episode is that for every single thing in life, there's a process that's associated with anything that is valuable, anything that is great. And you have, you know, you, you have value, you, you're valuable. You're, I believe that, you know, there's greatness in, inside of every one of us who decides to, to make the decision to, to walk with Christ. There's like, you that that greatness is unlocked that greatness is unveiled as you begin to even just walk with him and so i said that to say um i said that to say for every single thing that is valuable there's a process and while i mentioned us patterning ourselves or walking you know following christ and and being imitators of christ walking as he walked and all of those different things and one might be saying like yeah that's easier said than done yes it is easier said than done but the this this is why i think that like this is why it's important to for one all of the things that i shared in the last episode all of the things that i've been sharing just in the last few episodes about walking with God and about building your relationship with God, those key elements to just be mindful of those, of those things, because it isn't always easy. It isn't always easy. Um, it isn't always easy, but what I love about counting the cost is anybody who spends money on a particular thing, right? Even when it's something that is, is costly, you think about the outcome. If a person is about to spend a good fortune, a good amount of money, you think about the outcome like, wait, but I need this for this, but I'm willing to spend this because I want this so that A, B, C, D. And so anytime people, or most times when people are, unless you just spend recklessly, but most time when people, um, when people are spending, they think about the outcome. It's for a particular reason, right? When you think about the cost of something, you also, it's just, the cost is often associated with an outcome. And so when I think about the cost that requires, like what it costs us and what it requires for us to follow Christ, I think about the outcomes. I think about the outcomes. And so though it requires us to say no 
though it requires for us to daily make the decision to continue to follow, though it requires for us to turn from old ways and old patterns and all of these different things like that. The outcome, it's not because it's it, like, it's not just for no reason. It's not just because, oh yeah, um, these, these, like, it's not just for no reason. It's not just simply because, oh yeah, God don't want us to do this. And so like, that's just the, like every single thing I'm, I'm just, and this might be a little off topic, but I think it's on topic. I don't know. But every single thing that, that, that people tend to enjoy, right? Especially like when you don't know Christ, the things that people tend to enjoy majority of the time is something that's not good for you. It's something that, um, it's something that is either, whether it's not good for you mentally, emotionally, or physically, right? You think about, and even when, when people are walking with Christ and there's things that they're wrestling with, right? The things that's not good or the things that people enjoy is usually something that it's a reason why when, when God and tells us to turn away from certain things, like there's a reason why, like there's an instruction in place for us. And it's not just because, oh, just, yeah, just don't do this. There's a reason why. And it's kind of like when a parent puts a rule in place, like, hey, don't touch that. Like, for example, don't touch that fire, right? The parent knows, even without an explanation, let's just say a, a child is, is, a, is a baby and they don't, like or three years old, a toddler, and they don't understand that the reason why their parent is telling them not to touch the fire is because they, they may get burned. But the child sees the fire and they, they're, they're um, enticed or they love the look of the, the flames and they love the look of like this blue and orange looking flames that's going up. And so they want to touch it. The parent instructed them not to touch it. And the parent understands because you can get burned and, and it'll scorch your skin. And as a result, it'll be painful. It is the same thing where, you know, so, so many times, like, I feel like when it comes down to people, when it comes down to walking with Christ, when it comes down to just relationship with God, all of these different things, one of the things that people focus on is, is what God instructs us not to do, or what God instructs for us to refrain from, or, you know, people often talk about all oh, the rules, but it's not so much that it's rules. It's not, it's, it's standards that's put in place for us to walk according to, but it's standards for a reason standards so that we don't get burned standards so that the flames don't the, the flames don't leave a, a a painful lasting impact on our skin and think about even the flames they cause discoloration they change the texture and the tone of a person's skin and sometimes the very things that god is telling us to refrain from is things that leave an impact so much so that not that it changed the color of our skins, but it impacts behaviors. It impacts our thought process. It may impact how we, we see people or, you know, because think about it when, when let's just say, for example, if somebody gets hurt, right, by an individual, as a result now you have, there's some mistrust there or there's some, there's some walls that's, that's put up or, you know, and so like, Anything that God is instructing or, or telling us to refrain from or to turn away from, it's not just for no reason. It's because as a parent, I care about you so much so that, hey, these are the boundaries that's put in place so that you don't get burned. So that, that this doesn't alter who you are. So that this doesn't, this doesn't, this doesn't change who you are. This doesn't change the way that you see yourself because this, this thing hurts you to the core. And so, like, oh man, we got to count the cost. We got to count the cost. Like so many times we think about just, all right, man, I'm gonna have to do this or I'm gonna have to give this up or I'm gonna have to stop this. or I'm gonna have to, 
all of these different things we think about that so much we we focus so much on the cost on the sacrifice on what we feel like we're losing and missing out on we focus so much on you know even the the fact that sometimes we feel like we're not putting in the effort that's needed to follow and so we think about all of these things like i was mentioning before and allow them to impact our ability to follow right and it's like you got to count the cost like hey i know that there's some things that's required of me i know that i'm gonna have to say no sometimes i know that all of these different things i may have to sacrifice i know that i'm gonna have to sacrifice my time i know that i'm gonna have to um 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 pray i know that i like you i know that i'm gonna have to do all of these different things but the outcome but the outcome but the outcome and i'm not even just talking about the long-term outcome that's that's like what the promise is for god's children I'm not, I'm not even just talking about that but i'm talking about just like the outcomes of like when when we the bible literally says no good thing will god withhold from them that walk upright before him and so that's something that's that's not even like a long-term outcome this is something that's like the day-to-day -day. it's like if i'm walking according to your ways if i'm walking no good thing will you withhold from them that walk upright i'm counting the cause i'm counting the cause so like e even though there's some things that people may find that's entertaining there there may be some things that you may find that appeases the flesh right that that appeases that 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 nature of you that's not that nature of you that is contrary to what god desires i'll say that you have to say you have to like count the cost and think like wait but is this worth it is this is this worth it is this worth me missing out on certain things that god has promised me is this worth me is it worth it yeah we have to count the cost yes it's going to require us to say no some like yes is going to require us to say no some moments in our walk yes is going to require us to make up the decision in our mind daily to continue to follow yes is going to require um just the effort the sacrifice yes is going to require all of that but the outcome the outcome the outcome um i i, I was even as i was preparing right um i was reminded of the disciples and while the bible does not record every single thing that happened on the with the disciples with their process one of the things that i do know is that from the moment that they decided to, to to begin following we see the start of their follow right when they come to christ and then we see how they were doing ministry in all of these different parts of the earth right and we see how some of them were martyred because of them bearing the name of christ but for a lot of them the in between the process is 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 not recorded the in between is not recorded but what i love is how the bible sheds light on the start of their process and then it sheds light on how things ended how these people were martyred for the name of the lord and not that i'm saying that like not that i'm saying that for us but i'm saying that there was a willingness that in spite of whatever happened in the in between whatever happened in the midst of the process they still had a willingness to continue to follow I'm sure, and they still had a willingness to, to like, in spite of what it cost, in spite of what it cost, they still decided to follow. It's interesting sometimes how God, God deals with me, right? Because he give, he gave me this topic, counting the cost. And it's funny, right before I was getting ready to prepare, it was like, um, it was like the Lord had, had just dropped something on my heart. And he's like, there's he's like you you guys know that saying where people are like oh yeah um 
girls math a b c d and like like it'll be just like something like right and it's when the math is not mathing and so the lord was like god deals with me in in funny ways but the lord was was sharing with me how there's different kind of there's different kind of maths right and so there's um a math that we have for, for ourselves where we may even sometimes um when it comes down to oh I'm, I'm talking about counting the cost so for us sometimes it's just like oh you know what like um the way that we count things is you know what like this is this is requiring too much and so i know that i won't be i won't be able to do it i won't be able to to, to be consistent in this i won't be able to do that i know i won't be able and so that's the math that we go by. Sometimes that's that's our math. Sometimes, sometimes our math is, I made this mistake. I made that mistake, and so as a result, uh, like I don't feel like worthy. Um, I made this mistake. I made that mistake, and I don't feel like I can get this thing right. Right. That's our math. Sometimes our math is, you know what? Um, like I am sometimes our math is comparing um comparing instead of equating ourselves to the standard of god sometimes we compare to what we see for others that's our math right um and then there is the world's math where the world i don't even know how that math goes where where people um the, the standard is according to the, the things that's within the world, right? And then you have God's math where he's like, listen, I know that you made that mistake. I know that you made this mistake, but still follow. Like, you're, you're still, I still got you. You're in good hands. Like, I still, like, the love of God, the Bible literally says that the love of God covers a multitude of, of sin. And so his love covers multitude of sin not that we keep on doing it not that we because it also says shall we continue and send that grace may abound god forbid and so not that we keep on going in that way but understanding that even when you fall short god's math is get back up again you're counting the mistakes you're counting your shortcomings you're counting your failures you're comparing you're you're holding yourself to the world standards you're holding yourself at the standard of success that you see for other people all of these things and god's math is like no get back up again no keep going god's math is like no um um, the Bible declares a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up again. God's math is to get back up again and keep going. And so sometimes our math can be us counting the mistakes, counting how many times we fall short, counting the fact that we, we, we still have whatever issues going on, counting the fact that, all right, this is requiring too much. And God is just like, just make the decision to continue to follow anyhow. Just make the decision to like count the cost, count count the cost, count the fact that I've already redeemed you. I've forgiven you. Count the fact that you know that that I've called you out of darkness and into my marvelous. Like count that. Like count. Focus your your mind on those things and like that's God's math. That's God's math. And again, not that we continue in our own ways or continue to do the things that we would desire to do just because God is forgiven or God, God is merciful or he's gracious. No, not that, but just understanding the fact that when you do fall, you don't stay in that place. When you do fall, God's math says, Hey, rise up again. God's math say, Hey, a righteous man falls, but he gets back up again. Like that's, that's, that's God's math. Um, that's God's math. Sometimes when we count the cost and we, we focus so much on our own shortcomings and our own ways and what we can't do or what we can't seem to get right. And God is just like, no, just, just have the willingness to still continue to follow. Just have the willingness to still make the sacrifice. Cause that's what, that's what a cost is. It is a sacrifice. It is an effort, right? And so just make the decision to say, I'm still going to press. I'm still going to make the, the, the effort. I'm still going to make the decision to follow. I'm still going to continue to take up my cross. I'm still going to move forward. 
And so that that's God's math. That's God's math. And if there's nothing else that you got from this episode, I pray that the one thing that you got from this episode is to count the cost where I know that, you know, sometimes just in life, it may seem like so many things is requiring so much of us, whether it is, you know, whether it's the day to day that requires so much, whether it's tending to a family, tending to children, whether it's tending to our jobs, all of these different things. But one thing that that I'm always reminded of, of when you think about cost and, and the cost of things, it, you can't help but think about outcomes. You can't help but think about what comes along with the cost. So wherever you are, whatever it is that you, you got going on, if you've been in a place where it's like, man, these different things has been hard. These different things have been weighty. These different things has been just whatever. Even the walk with God has been a weight. It's been, it's been, it's been a bit difficult. My encouragement to you today is to count the cost where I know that whatever it is may be requiring a lot. I know even the walk with God sometimes may seem like it is requiring a lot, but the outcome, the outcome, the outcome, the the assurance, not even just the benefits that come with walking with God, but just the assurance that he got you, the assurance that he's with you, the assurance that your future is secure in him, right? Because that's what the Bible says. It says plans to give you hope and a future. I know the plans that I think towards you. They are of good and not of evil to give you hope in a future. Some version says an expected end. That's one of, that's the scripture that I love because it's just like, hey, it's not just about the benefits that come along with walking with God, but it's even just the reality that no matter what it is that I'm facing, that even when the cost is a lot, even when it's weighty, even when it's heavy, even when, you know, there, there's like, even when all of these different things are happening, it's the fact that he's with me. It's the fact that my future is secure in him. It's the fact that he got me. It's the fact that, hey, look, the outcome is far greater. The outcome is far greater, where though sometimes in a walk, it requires some things, though it requires saying no, though it requires a daily surrender, though it requires, you know, dying to your to, to yourself, like letting go of your old ways, though it requires transitions and all of these different things, though, though sometimes we have to go through moments of warfare and all of these things, counting the cost suggests that look, I know who got my future and I know who's with me in the midst of all of it. And so the outcome is far much greater than the current. The outcome is far much greater than the current. And so that is pretty much what I have for you guys today. Count the cost. Um, I know that, you know, just what it requires to follow Christ. It requires letting go of, of self, of, of those old ways. But I promise you that it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. Um, it is worth it. And if you personally don't know the promises that God has for those who believe in you, I mean, believe in him, I'm sorry. If you personally don't know the promises that God has for those who believe in him, Everything is accessible at the click of a button. So I will encourage you to look up scriptures, right? Look up scriptures. You can Google promises of God, like promises, promises of God, scriptures on the promises of God. You can Google scriptures on God's promise for his children. You can like look, look up what the Bible says. Scripture, you can look up scriptures on joy scriptures on peace scriptures on on um on um just whatever like what like this the bible literally it covers it all and you can look up those things and meditate on that and i promise you you can find rest in that and so count the cost count the cost um i pray that you guys were blessed by this episode i pray that you guys were encouraged um, go ahead and if you have not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe on YouTube, S subscribe on Apple Podcasts, on Amazon Music, on Spotify, follow on um, on Instagram at Saved With Sauce, follow on, um, I was about to say, no, 
not follow. Yeah, follow on Instagram at Saved with Sauce. Leave a review, a comment on this video. I thank you so much for journeying with me. Um, I pray that you guys, again, were blessed by this episode. And remember to count the cost count the cause. And so, Father, we just thank you, Lord God. We pray, Father, for every single one of the listeners, Lord. I pray, Father, for the person who may be even challenged in their walk with you, Father. I pray, Lord, that they will understand, God, that the the, the future is far greater than the current, Lord. I pray, God, that they will know, Father, that what's ahead is far much greater. And so, Lord, I pray that every single person listening to this will continue to enjoy, it, Lord, endure the process, endure the process while walking with you, Father. I pray that whatever it is that they have their hands to, Lord God, that they will continue to work diligently towards it, Father. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. I give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. And as I always say, let's journey together. Let's thrive. Let's heal.